again, my call, Kilo 8, November, Echo, Echo, K-H-N-E-E, QSL? Okay, QSL, my friend, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Kilo 8, November, Echo, Echo, uh, beautiful copy, beautiful copy in Chile. Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to the second part of IC705 Spectrum Scope Operation and Settings. Let's get right into it. Before I get into any additional settings, I want to circle back to something that we covered last time, and that is the max hold feature, which you can see I've got turned back on on here, where you see the, the gray background. Whenever there's a strong signal, it retains it. I have it set to the 10 second hold, and when we looked at this in the last video, I also showed you that there was a max hold on where these just stay indefinitely. It's not quite indefinitely. There are some things that will turn those off, and I wanted to make sure that I covered that. So one of them is the hold button. We covered the hold button. If you just press it briefly, it stops the display, and if you press it again, it continues on. But the other function of the hold soft key is if you press and hold that for a second it clears the max hold feature. So whether you've got it set to the 10 second hold or the permanent hold, pushing the hold button and holding it, sorry a few too many holds in there, pushing the hold button and holding it for a second will clear the max hold display. The other thing that will clear it is anything that changes the, dis changes the display. Now, I'm in fixed mode, so as I'm moving the frequency here, the max hold stuff is staying on the screen. But if I change the edge to a different edge, that clears whatever was held. And every time you change the edge, that clears it. And also on the center display, if you're in center mode, if you change frequencies, because that's going to move all this, moving clears it as well. So you can clear that if you do like the max hold feature. Oh, there goes an ionosound. Um, if you like the max hold feature, all you got to do in center mode is just move your frequency to clear it or press and hold that hold button. So I just wanted to go over that and make sure I covered that from last time. Now I'm going to go back in there and, whoops, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to turn that back off just because I prefer it that way and for the purposes of what we're going to be looking at, having it off is fine. All right, so the last time we covered things, we finished up with the marker and turning on the transmit and receive markers. Let's go back into the settings here, and we did all of the center type displays here. We did averaging, and we were just about to get to waveform type. I just changed that back to the default because I was playing with this earlier. So waveform type, the default is fill, and as you can see, the waveforms are basically filled in underneath. The other option is fill plus line, which is the waveform is filled in and it has a little line over it. Now, if you're looking at the screen, and I'm going to zoom in on this here, I'm not sure if you can even see it zoomed in, you really don't see much difference between fill and fill plus line. And I will show you why that is. We'll go back into the settings here. And we're going to skip over the waveform color for the moment, and we're going to go to the waveform color for the line. And you notice that the color is this sort of very dark brown-orange color. So the reason that you don't really notice the line on the display is because it's pretty close to the black that's in the background. So let's take a look at that, and then at the same time here, we'll also look at some of the options you have for colors. So you see here on this second page we've got waveform color and it's kind of a not quite white but a pretty light gray and of course that's what the waveforms have been and then you have 
waveform color for the line, which is our dark brown, and then waveform color for that max hold, and there's that sort of bluish gray that you've been seeing. So you can set these to whatever your preferences are. Let's go do the waveform color first, just for, for grins, and you can see on the screen here what it looks like as you're changing these. So let's do a, uh, uh, let's see here, we'll make a nice um, purple waveform just for grin. So if we go back out, now you can see the waveform is purple. And of course that's, well, I don't know, I don't find that terribly visible. But, so now you can see that the waveform is purplish. And remember that we have this set in the fill plus line mode. So let's go down here and let's adjust the line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that that line is basically just green. And let's go back and see how that looks. Now you can see the line is very pronounced and then the fill underneath the waveform is pretty dim. And we could turn the waveform fill actually all the way down to black if we just turn this down to zeros. So now there is no option for waveform line only, but if you set the fill color to black, it's effectively the same thing. So now we have a green waveform. And again, this is all a personal preference thing. You can set these however you like, but you've got, uh, let's see, 255 times 255 times 255 options for each one. And I forget what that is. It's not quite a million. I think that's a quarter million colors or something like that. I used to remember that number at one point. So that's waveform, fill plus line, and then the colors. And then of course the max hold, I'm not gonna change that color right now. You get the idea. You can set that to whatever color you like. The next option on the settings here is waterfall display, and it's on by default. So if I turn that off and we go back out, well, strangely nothing has changed. The reason for that is the waterfall display when the spectrum scope is expanded is always on. The waterfall display on off feature is for the small scope or if I press the M scope and you have the small scope up above and you don't have the soft keys visible. So waveform off turns it off for the small versions of the scope. But if you have the scope expanded, the wave, uh, sorry, the waterfall, excuse me, I misspoke. The waterfall is always going to be on in the expanded scope. So let's go back and I'm going to turn that on because I happen to like it on even with the small scopes. And then the next one here, sorry, I flipped one too quick there. Waterfall speed mid and you've got slow, mid, and fast. Mid is the default that it's set to. And you may be asking yourself if you watched the last video, well wait a minute, I thought we did speed here on uh, the second page of the display with those one, two, and three arrows up there. This speed is for the entire spectrum scope. So if you notice if I go to slow the waveforms up here update and the scope up uh, sorry the waterfall update are happening together you'll see kind of each one of them updates as it's ticking through there so i'm going to go back to fast the waterfall speed is controlling how quickly the waterfall is going down so now you see this is updating pretty fast but you'll notice the waterfall is cascading down at a little bit slower rate. And then if I go all the way up to fast here, now you see the waterfall is cascading down very quickly. So you have, it's kind of a interactive thing. If you change this speed, it's gonna change the waterfall um, also because it's how fast it's updating, but then 
regardless of how you change this speed, the waterfall speed will also adjust on top of that. So again, uh, without making this overly complicated, which I've probably already made it more complicated than it needs to be, you got two speed settings. You can tweak both of them till the, you find a setting that, that you like that works for you. All right, let's go down to the next one. Waterfall size, and that's on the expanded screen. So again, the default is mid, and you're going to be shocked to see that the uh, choices are small, mid, and large. If I make it small, whoops, sorry, um, you'll see the waterfall is pretty small here. And this makes the grid lines a little, a little more space between the grid lines, too, on the waveform display at the top. But um, if you want to just see more of the waveform, or if you really want to see a lot of waterfall, then you can make the waterfall large. So, again, personal preference, whoever uh, appeals to you. I'm going to leave that at mid for the time being. Waterfall peak color level. And it says grid 8. Again, this is the default. What that's talking about is the, the waterfall has, you know, the, the dark, uh, bl almost black, is basically no signal or the lowest signal level. And then you have kind of a dark blue, and you see some lighter blue here. And really, and there's some uh, kind of a greenish there. It progresses through colors. There are no options for what the waterfall colors are, other than where this peak is. So you can't change the, the waterfall style, if you will, like you can on some digital programs. So let me show you what this means. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me show you what the grid 8 means. So if you count the little horizontal lines here, there's actually, starting from one up from the baseline, there's eight up to the top. So what that says is the waterfall will get to the brightest color level for a signal that's up at eight. And if I move up here to one of these really strong signals, see it happened again. Every time I tune to a signal, it stops transmitting. I don't know why that is. It's a video thing. Um, Come on. Sorry, I was just trying to get something that you heard. So I guess I could be patient, right, and just wait. So, I mean, this guy is 20 dB over S9, and he's only coming halfway up on the scope here. So I'm not... Uh, I'm not sure what kind of signal it takes to get all the way up to the top there, but at any rate, we can take a look at the peak color level at grid 8. So, as you might guess, you can set this all the way down to grid 1. So let's set it to grid 4, and we can see what the effect of that is. Now you see we've got some yellows and reds in here on these stronger signals, so basically it just says where and the peak color I believe is red. I think red is like the strongest. So once again, personal preference. This is just how you like the waterfall to look. Let's see, we're getting pretty close to the end here. Waterfall marker auto hide, that applies in fixed mode. The default is on. Let me just show you that. So as we move the marker here, as I'm tuning, you'll see the marker is actually going all the way down to the bottom of the waterfall. And then when I stop tuning, after a couple seconds pause, it hides the marker in the waterfall so you don't see it in the waterfall. That's all that is. If you turn auto hide off, that marker will stay there in the waterfall. We can. I keep not holding this long enough, folks. I'm sorry about that. If I turn that off, then the marker is just always there. And then the last option, this is at the bottom here, is fixed edges. 
And if you watched the last video on this, you recall I said that you can change the fixed edges. So this tells you, or this menu lets you change the fixed edges. Now, the way this is laid out, you'll notice we have 0 0.03 megahertz to 1.6 megahertz. So that actually covers the AM broadcast band. Then 1.6 to 2, so 160 meters is in here. 2 to 6, which covers 80 meters, and also 60 meters, at least for those of you that are in the U.S., the 5 uh, megahertz frequencies that we have. Then 6 to 8 megahertz, so that covers 40 meters. 8 to 11, 11 to 15, I'm not going to go through all of these because this goes all the way up to UHF on this radio. You notice they start to get a little bigger up here, like 26 to 30, so that covers 10 meters. And then this covers, there is no gap here. It goes 26 to 30, the next one is 30 to 45. So this is all outside of amateur bands here. This is just, um, you know, shortwave and, and up into lower VHF. 45 to 60, so this will include the 6 meter band. 60 to 74 and so on and so on. So every one of these, the, the next group up starts at the end of the group down. These frequencies here, you cannot change. This is the ranges for the scope. So let's go take a look at, for example, where 20 meters is. So you get four fixed edges for each of those options, each of those ranges you can set up to four fixed edges. And as I mentioned last time, the defaults is pretty much the number one edge is the entire amateur band. So this has got all of 20 meters and then different portions of 20 meters. If we go down here and we look at the 10 meter, this has got various, I'm sorry, 10 megahertz. It's got various portions of the 30 meter band here on 10 megahertz. If we go down further, the 6 to 8, this is going to have the different parts of 40 meters. If we do the 2 to 6, you know, you notice this has got several different segments of 80 meters. It doesn't have the 60 meter band in it. So if you wanted to have the 60 meter band, you could set one of these. So if I wanted to set this edge I could set this to, and I don't recall, I should know this, I don't remember what the um, uh, 60 meter band frequencies are, but, oops, I didn't hit enter. So, enter, and then you notice it bumped this one up. The The right one has to be above the left one. It's got to, it always has to be low to high. And then we'll just say 5.5. Uh, enter. So now if we get out of here and I go down to 80 meters and there's lots of noise down here and if I go edge, so edge number two is another part of 80 meters, edge number three is another part of 80 meters and then now edge number four is off and I'm not sure why it's showing to the left, because it should be to the right. Scope, and by the way, I don't think I showed you scope out of range last time. If you're more than, and I don't know what trick triggers this, I think it's like 500 kilohertz away. It says scope out of range, but I'm puzzled why... Oh, I'm sorry, it is to the left. I'm, I'm brain dead here. Because I'm on 3.5 megahertz, the scope range is 5 to 5.5, so of course it's pointing to the left. And the green arrows are flashing, and you've got a set of red arrows here also, because it's so far away, it's basically saying, okay, it's not, I'm, I'm not going to get there reasonably by just tuning like this. So... Let's go in here and we'll do frequency input and I'll just go to 5 megahertz. So 
And now we're right at the very left edge. And of course that was WWV. And we've got some broadcast stuff, but anyway, you get the idea. So you can set the scope ranges to cover different segments of different bands if you want. Um, and I believe if I go, if I press and hold this, it'll go back to default. So it'll set that to what the default settings are. So if you totally mess this up, you can always press and hold any of these and it'll take it back to what the default is for that setting. Or you can do like I do and just reset the entire radio, which I seem to do frequently. So again, you can adjust these for different portions of the band. If you want to have a fixed edge for some general coverage part of uh, HF that you like to listen to broadcast stations, wherever you want, you can set those fixed edges. There, there's continuous coverage all the way up through the radio's range. Now, well, you notice that we skipped from 200 to 400, but that's because the radio doesn't cover in that range. So that's how you program the fixed edges. Now, there is one final piece of the scope that, uh, whoops, let's go back up here to 20 meters. Another feature that was added, and I believe on the 705, this was version 1.2 of the firmware, added this feature. So if you have a 705 and you haven't updated it, you're going to want to make sure you're at least up to 1.2. So the other feature that they've added is there is a scroll mode. Now the center fixed here, as we've learned, you can press to go back and forth between center mode and fix mode. If you press and hold this, it says scroll dash F up here. So now we are in fixed mode, but it's going to scroll. So what this will do now, as I go off the right side of the screen and notice we've got 14 to 350. So we've got 350 kilohertz here. If I scroll off, now it's 350 to 700. So it keeps this width the same width. It's set up to um, 350 kilohertz wide and if I go off the upper edge it'll scroll again and it'll just keep scrolling so as you tune it will keep scrolling to catch up with wherever you are. If you just touch the center fix it'll go back to fixed mode and it will go back to where you started out. Um, and of course I can use the touch tuning to bring my marker back. You also have scroll mode from center mode. So here I'm 100 kilohertz wide, minus 50 to plus 50 in center mode. And if I press and hold in center mode, now it says scroll C, which is scroll from center mode. And now it's not centered anymore, it's just like in fixed mode, except now I've got a 100 kilohertz wide group, and again, it's going to scroll as I keep tuning. So now I'm tuning across a 100 kilohertz band. And one of the reasons you might want to do it from center mode, <coughs> pardon me, is because from center mode, if I set my span to be, for example, uh, Oh, let's say just 10, 20 kilohertz wide, so plus 10 to minus 10. And then, whoops, sorry, let me go back into scroll center. Now I can scroll through like these plus and minus 10 kilohertz blocks. And you notice it's when you're in scroll mode, once it scrolls, it switches to the actual frequency rather than just giving you a span. So that's your scroll mode, and again, if you just touch it, it'll go back to whatever the previous mode was, whether you started out from fixed or from center. And I believe that covers everything there is to cover for the spectrum scope. Maybe I've missed something, but I think that covers 
pretty much all of the features that you can do with it. That's all I've got on the spectrum scope. I hope you found a couple of pieces in there that'll be useful for you. And speaking of useful, if you did find this video useful or you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a click on that like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing and please hit the bell icon so you'll get notified when new episodes come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.